Hello, Mark Crossfield here. Welcome to the Golf Swing Weekly Fix. We've got more lessons coming at you this week. We've got some great questions also. Loads to do. We've got a bit of sun at last here in the UK. Ground's a little bit wet, but at least the sun is shining. Let's get stuck in. Okay. Look, lots of good movements in this swing. Um, watch this, this is an interesting move and I see this a lot amongst golfers and it's almost like this um, kind of ever longing desire to hit from in to out that people think about. Watch this look, on the way through. Backswing pretty neat, lots of good movements in there. Now on the way through, look at the separation and the direction of these arms. They couldn't be pushing more away from his body if he tried, which is really encouraging to push the club from basically in to out. And then at this stage on the way through here, try and basically flip the club over to stop the ball going to the right, which is the direction he's swinging. So what we're seeing is a common, common fault. I see it so often. And it's from people having this real longing desire to try and hit into out for this kind of draw shape that everyone's so keen to get. Um, and to get a, a, a nice draw on the ball, it's a very subtle club path to face angle change. It's not as aggressive as most people think. Now, I've done a video before on exit point, so um, you can look that one up and it, it'll help you more in depth of, of how to fix this. But you've got to start thinking about your follow through in a similar way to the way you think about your backswing. So what I mean by that is my club doesn't move back straight from the ball. It moves straight from the ball for a small period of time. So it doesn't just move straight back from the ball and stay straight back. It starts coming on a bit of a curve because basically you're swinging on a plane, on an arc, if you like. So the club's coming around, back down to the ball and then back around. Now what we see from this guy is there's no back around. We see him starting to move his plane more into this kind of model. So backswing not too bad, downswing quite a long way from the inside as he tries to get over that yellow line out on the way through. So out parallel with the ball, big extension away from his body. Where for me, the two kind of slots I'm trying to hit are much more kind of along these lines. So more parallel to the line I'm trying to hit the ball. Because I'm trying to follow that hoop, I'm trying to move the club more over to my feet, parallel to the target line, and coming down, hitting the ball out in front of me, turning through, and then again returning back more parallel with my feet. So on the way through, I'm pointing my club more parallel to the target line. I'm not pointing my club completely at the target line. So you need to start thinking about trying to exit a little bit further left. Now to do that, you need to start thinking about trying to really open up your hips, open up your shoulders on the way through and feel like your arms are a lot more connected to the way you're turning your body rather than getting this massive stretch out on the way through. So downswing follow through, you want to think of it lots more of a rotational movement onto the ball. So really trying to turn onto that ball a little bit more. Try and push that ball out towards target rather than literally trying to throw your arms so far out to the right. And a great way to do that, just put a club out in front of you parallel to your target line, along your feet line, and just make a few swings where you feel like on the way through, how much more connected your arms feel when you get your club more parallel to this line on the ground rather than trying to get it in line with the target line so much on the way through. Let me know how you get on. A great lesson here that really shows you the importance of club face control. I've done lots of lessons on club face control but watch this swing here it's amazing watch. So as we come back what we're going to see is instant breakdown with the hands so the hands break down from the face. They completely disconnect from the start. And then what happens is now the club face is coming back, what we call close, shut, pointing left. As he continues up to the top, we see the face at the top of the back swing very, very close. So in all intents and purposes, this ball is going left. Now, what happens is people have coordination and they're trying to coordinate to their target out here in the distance. So what they do 
is they then try to override the club face. They don't try to sort the club face out, they try to override it. So what we see on the way down is this massive panic where the shoulders stay closed, hips stay square, no effort to open up on the way through. And then as he comes through, really just pushing his hands completely straight through, no returning to the left, like we said on the last video, no turning through. But it's all built around that club face control. And what I like to do with people like this who swing this way is I like to get them hitting in the ball straight left. So getting them to try and make a more technical movement with their body and then dealing with the grip or the club face issue second. So look, what I mean by that is we're seeing on this one, this real desire, it's almost cricket. I mean, I see this a lot with hockey players and cricket players. So we see the complete disconnection at the start between hands, club face to body so we just see that instant angle put in at the start no taking the club back with your arms letting it rotate back as your body moves back no kind of one piece feelings on takeaways if you like it's complete wrist for hinge to get the face closed now the face is going to be delivered closed so he does everything he can to try and hold the face off chicken winging it on the way through to hit target so best way for you and people who might struggle with this to, to fix this it's just start to embrace the left side. Introduce yourself to the left side. Just say hello to it. Get involved with the left hand side. Stop trying to pat everything down the right. So what I mean by that, make your normal backswing. Just let your club face close. But on the way through, do everything you can to turn left. Feel like you're swinging left. Let the club exit more into the left. Like I was saying on the last video, don't try and hit target. Actually try and get the grip or the club face doing what it should be doing. If I make a swing, or I close the face that much on the way back, because the rest of my swing is relatively synced, kind of neutral to target, if you like, because the face is out of sync, it's now closed, what happens is the ball just shoots low left, and you need to start hitting a few of those shots, and then you can embrace the issue, which, on that video, it's hard to see. It might be your right hand grip often is, isn't quite right. It might be just that you want to take the club face back closed and you need to think about trying to get the face back where the toe end of the club is a little bit more up to the sky, not so pointing down or out to the side of the face pointing down at the ground. But you've got to embrace opening your hips up on the way through, opening your shoulders up on the way through, trying to hit the ball and letting your arms come back to the left side and around up over your left shoulder rather than this desire to try and push everything out to try and counteract the face. It's this kind of cause and effect, isn't it? So embrace the left side, then sort out the club face. If you sort out the club face first, what will tend to happen is you'll get the face set. If you make your normal follow through where you're drastically opening the face, trying to hit the ball straight, you'll hit the ball so far right, you'll, right, you'll change the grip straight away. My experience, try and get people hitting the ball left, embracing the bad grip, embracing the bad club face, let that take effect, let it, let it hook left, and then they want to change the grip. It's not a case of me changing it, they want to stop it in it left, so we change the grip, bang down the middle, and start hitting some better shots. Let me know how you get on, I'd love to hear how you find that. Open up on the way through a lot more, try and exit a little bit more to the left, try and feel like you are allowing the face to close, don't try and let it stay open on the way through you'll start hitting the ball long way left and then you send another video. We can have a look, we can sort your grip out or your club face to get you hitting it straighter after that. So we've got more questions coming at you guys. Here we go, we've got one on YouTube, posted as a comment. Hi, I'm a big fan of yours. Question for you, do you hit shots with a slightly close stance or am I reading too much into it? Uh, be great to hear your take on it. Keep up the good work, thanks for watching. Um, now, do I hit shots with a closed face? I get this question a lot actually. Um, no, I try not to, I aim, in my opinion, with a straight square stance, so I try and aim parallel to the line I'm trying to hit the ball on. Where close stance would be pointing my feet across the line or the parallel line that I'm trying to hit the ball along. The reason it looks close, and this is a great video for guys and girls using apps to draw lines and capture their swing. There's a thing called, pers there's a perspective, thing called perspective when you film with cameras. Uh, people always say the camera never lies, and that's a lie. The camera only lies. You speak to anyone who's any good 
with their cameras. The hardest thing with cameras is trying to get them to look real because you've got to fiddle with the settings, you've got to fiddle with the angles. You know, film production takes for hours um, because they're trying to get the lighting and everything right to court to create the right scene. Now, there's a simple fault in golf when recording, then playing back on videos, and pros get this wrong, amateurs get this wrong, with perspective. The reason my feet look closed in some of the videos is because of the angle of the camera. So what happens? At the moment, the camera is down my feet line. So my feet will look relatively parallel to that camera. If I simply move my feet back here while keeping them parallel to that line, what happens is my feet will look more and more on that image, that two-dimensional sensor that that image is being captured on, will look more and more closed. They're not closed, they're still square parallel to that line, but they're gonna appear like the left is more in front of the right because of the angle you're looking at. The same as if I go over this side and keep my feet parallel, now it might look like my feet are more open. And this is happening when you're filming your videos. So for instance, if I make a backswing, say to a very common position that people look at where they get it wrong here, where you can see my face is parallel to my feet line. If I simply come back here, what happens is that club probably looks like it's more behind me now. It's not, it's still parallel to my line, but the angle the camera is picking me up on is making that club look like it's gone behind me. And then the closer I get to the camera, the more behind me that looks. It's not behind me. It's still parallel to my feet line. It's called perspective. It's the angle of the camera. So in answer to your question, when I hit my shots, I try not to hit with a closed stance. I try to have a square stance to hit my shots. But depending on where I have the camera set up, depending on the ground, how close it is, how far away for what shot I'm going for, it makes my feet look open or closed. And it's a great tip for you guys using all your apps to try and video your swing. Make sure you get the camera. If you want to look at club path, then I'll always have my club set up behind the club. If you want to look at swing path, so if I'm looking at a position, say, parallel to the hips here, uh, I'll make sure the camera's behind the club at that point because that's the point I'm going to measure. Because as it goes, swings around its angles, unless you understand perspective brilliantly, a good way of doing that is simply putting some lines on the ground, you're going to get confused with the angles and start giving yourself some poor information. Hope that helps. Another question coming at you here. Again, this one is a comment on YouTube. Hey Mark, I'm having trouble getting my driver up in the air and if I do get it airborne, I slice. So I was wondering if you could help me with that. Thanks mate. Okay, Kevin mate, here we go. Look, this is a common one. Um, it's angle of attack. We have my driver here. Just tee this little beauty up. Right, what's happening? If you are slicing the ball, that means your club face has to be open to the path you're swinging on. Let's pretend you're hitting it out the middle. This could go on all night because obviously different strikes can cause different shapes as well. But let's pretend you're hitting the ball out in the middle of the bat, so out the middle of the face, and you're saying you're hitting the ball low, but if you do get it in the air ball, uh, up in the air, you do get it airborne, it slices. So that means your club face is open to the path you're swinging on. And there is the spin, the slice spin, if you like, that's happening. Now, if I tee a driver up, with an average swing speed, you want to be hitting a driver on the level to one to two degrees up as a benchmark. There's lots of different permutations on that, but you want to be hitting that club on the way up. Now, if I'm hitting my ball on the way up, what tends to happen is my path tends to be relatively straight to slightly in to out. Now, you mentioned two things. You're hitting the ball low and you're slicing it. So what happens if I turn hoopy this way, so to the left, out to in, you'll notice that this pencil now goes, so if you think of the pencil as the ballistic firing of the ball off the face, if you like, pencil now goes from high to low. If I simply turn the hoop more so it approaches from inside to out, pencil goes from low to high. So it's not always a case of moving the swing back or forward to hit up or down. Your swing path can contribute as well to your lift and spin. So simple tip, have a go. Next time you're on the range, simple thought. This doesn't always work, but sometimes has amazing effects on people. It's like eureka moments. Simply tee the ball up nice and high and try your hardest to consciously, 
So deliberately hit that ball on the upswing. So to do that, you can feel your hips going forwards as they turn, head stays back. Feel like your left leg is straightening as you come in to hit the ball to get some lean in your upper body to feel like you're gonna get up the ball. If you hit up at that ball, you might push it or even push slice it, but you won't hit it lower and you won't probably get anywhere near as much slice as you're getting by all the sounds of it. You haven't sent me a video, but just from your description, it sounds to me like you're hitting down, which then makes you hit more across. You're leaving the face open to try and carve it back to target. So you're getting a lot of low shots because you hit down on it with a driver with not much loft. If you haven't got the right club head speed, it ain't gonna lift. And then obviously if it's coming down at it, as we saw from Hoopy there, it tends to point more to the left. So you're leaving the face open and there's your spin. Let me know what you think. Have a go, simple thought for you. It's, it can be much deeper than this. So if this doesn't help, you know, send me a video, go and see your local pro, really get into the nitty gritty of it. But lots of people I get, you literally just try and get them to consciously hit on the way up. You'll be surprised how many people with drivers swinging around 80 miles an hour, even just short of 100, and not trying to hit on the way up. They're just hitting it. Where for me, driver, off a tee, I know that ball's on the tee. For my club head speed, I get the maximum distance. If I am hitting that ball on the upswing, I get a good launch. If I got the right shaft and driver, which I have, I get nice spin and I get maximum distance. Let me know how you go with that. Get that ball on the upswing. You won't hit down and across it so much. You'll get some height and hopefully take some spin off it. So if you like what's going on here, don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel. Also thumbs up the video, post comments. Love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social. The more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well. Just follow the links all in the description. Come and join the show. Get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.